what I'm hoping and what, what we're actually seeking at the firm, what we're trying very hard to fund. Um, I'm hoping, for example, for podcasts, I'm hoping five years from now, there will be these thriving, you know, call it Web3 podcast environments that will be open and will be, you know, it, it will have this sort of anarchic, uncontrolled kind of element that I think that I think you and I both like. Um, however, we'll have a higher level of trust and we'll have a higher level of monetary incentive and economic incentive um, than, than the open networks of the past usually did. And so there, there's this there's this third way. And, it, you know, this is still early, but like we're, 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 we're quite optimistic that there might be a new way to build these systems. And I'm, I'm excited to see what happens. But what's the concrete advantage of Web 3.0 for podcasts? So right now, you and I may not feel like it, but we are anarchic and uncontrolled, right? Like we yeah. can say something. Some external force isn't going to censor us. Why is this a better podcast if it's done through Web 3.0? Why can't we just put well, it most, out there? Yeah, well, the most obvious thing is just money. Um, you just you don't get paid. How does someone like Rogan, it doesn't have to be him, but a well-known podcast host, how does that person get paid in a better way through Web 3.0? Make that more concrete for us. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, they they pick they can pick their business model. I mean, they can pick their business model. They can decide you know subscription based business model. You know, micro micro transactions. They can pick you know they can pick whatever model they want. Um, you know, they can also have indirect, you know, there's this whole, this whole new rise of this kind of the, the, the non-fungible token, um, you know, kind of this idea of unique digital assets. There's, you know, completely different monetization methods that are opening up for media. Um, you know, it's entirely possible in the future, for example, you, you'll have entire, you know, forms of media like video games and sporting events and music and so forth that will monetize in completely different ways through the creation of, you know, unique digital property, you know, that gets sold and, and, uh, and, and, and trades. Um, and so you, you, it's, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's look, it's injecting, it's injecting economics. It's injecting at a very fundamental level, kind of internet native money, internet native economics and, and incentives, uh, into a system that, that simply hasn't had that. And of course, this isn't to say that everything needs to cost money. This isn't to say that lots of people won't choose to have things be free. Um, but the ability to the, put it this way, the hard decision between free, uh, the hard decision between, let's say total independence and no money. Um, and then having a traditional contractual relationship with one company like that, that shouldn't be the trade off. There should be lots of room in the middle for experimentation. And that's that's the zone we're heading into now. But is the key difference easier micro payments is the key difference sort of being able to sell collectibles more readily, say, with the NFT model rather than signed T-shirts? Those yeah, don't it's, it's sound, the they don't sound very big to me. They both sound like possible advantages. But as a percentage of GDP, they sound like really tiny advantages. And so percentage of GDP, I mean, it's a percentage of GDP, like everything is tiny compared to like healthcare. Um, so, so, I mean, the, the media industry is quite small, right? Like if you just, if you look at slice of, per, a slice of percentage of GDP, like it's actually, turns out, it's actually really interesting. Like video games, it turns out is actually quite large, but like yes. you know, television, print, you know, newspapers, newspapers, you know, have always been a tiny slice of GDP. Like magazines have always been a tiny slice. Book publishing has always been a tiny slice. You know, but they're tiny slices that really matter. Um, you know, so I don't. Yeah, I don't really look at it. I don't really look at it top down. I don't really look at it as like, okay, this this therefore has to lead to like an expansion of 100xing the media business. Like that's not the like maybe it, I, I think it grows the media business, but it doesn't have to like it cause it explode like that. 